Gibraltar's MEPs, Julie Gerling and Claire Moody, were both present to hear the Chief Minister's presentation. Those wanting to get a fuller picture of the implications of Brexit found the differences between Scotland and Gibraltar interesting, but, more importantly, having the similarities highlighted. The MEPs say they weren't surprised at the fact that Spain had the loudest voices in the room. They are always saying the same things uh, and they not going forward in any spirit of construction, constructive spirit. So that's a real shame. But I think, you know, if they continue like this, they show themselves up. It's, it's so obviously that they're just seeing the situation and wanting to use it to very narrow political advantage rather than thinking about the benefit that comes from Gibraltar's position, particularly to the whole of Andalusia. And, I wish they'd be a little less narrow-minded and think a bit more widely. I think it was really important today to have Fabian here to explain that Brexit is more than just, you know, Theresa May's speech last week or whenever, you know, or the other comments that are coming, which are oversimplifying hugely what the consequences of Article 50 are. Article 50 has ramifications for Gibraltar way beyond any of the discussions that we are having currently in the kind of the British arena. But also it's really important for the other 27 member states to hear that you know, this needs to be part of the conversations, the meetings, the negotiations that are happening around Article 50 and the future relationship, whatever that may be, between the UK and the EU. The EU representatives are no strangers to Spain's claim over Gibraltar and the effect on bilateral relations. So what was their reaction to the attitude shown by the Spanish MEPs at the session? What I think they find very difficult to understand is how any of the member states, including Spain, could think that that is the single most important thing about Brexit. Um, in the sense of obstructing it, uh, they would like to see a constructive ways forward. Almost everybody from the other 27 member states, wants to see the UK's leaving the EU in a constructive way. They want to find ways of making it work. But for perfectly selfish reasons, apart from anything else, uh, UK is a huge economy in Europe, a big trader with the other 27. We want to make it work. My personal perspective is that we need to look at this from the future. You know, whether we would have regrets about any process. And my view is that we do not know enough yet about the consequences of Theresa May's strategy. We haven't got enough detail on what she intends to do with Article 50, and the detail we have currently, frankly, worries me. And consequently, I do not believe that we should be rushing into Article 50. In but it is that, that isn't it? It's it. not that you don't have enough detail, because she obviously gave her speech. It's that... Labour doesn't like the detail, doesn't like the single market being out of the... Yeah, on the detail we have had, we have got, precious little has been said about Gibraltar and other points and uh, the fact, you know, all sorts of things as, as a fallout. But yes, you're right, on what I've seen, I think what I've seen is damaging, immensely damaging. It's damaging for Gibraltar, it's damaging for all of the UK. Claire Moody added there was still a lot of work to be done and a long way to go before there was a Brexit she would be happy to live with.